Hopefully I'm good here. Giovanni, how you doing? Doing good. Thank you. I'm, I'm curious, Giovanni, how difficult is it to walk that kind of tightrope of um, having that urgency to, uh, you know, to play hard and win all the time, but then be patient for that opportunity um, that, you know, you you obviously want to play in the NHL every day, but, you know, you, you keep getting sent back down here and going up and it, it's, you're not the first one to have to do this, but how do you, how do you wait to walk that tightrope of uh, urgency and patience? Um, I guess to sum everything up, what you just asked me is um, just stick to the plan that's been set by myself and people around me and just follow the plan. And, you know, if you follow your life plans, things will end up the way you want it to go. Is it difficult um, to do that, to, to have that kind of patience, especially when you go up and you produce like you did, you know, in that eight games, you had four points, you were doing a little everything. Is it difficult to accept, you know, the, the road and the path you have to take before maybe you become an everyday player? Um, like I would say difficult is a pretty harsh word, but, you know, to say, um, like a lot of the guys, like I'm not the only guy that's that's ever done this, and this is happening. This has happened through everyone's career, pretty much. That um, you know, you have to come from juniors, you have to go to the AHL, prove a couple of seasons, and then you know, just because of the situation that you know I'm in, it's just uh, with contracts and everything. It's just the way of the road, really. All right, next question is uh, Elaine Shearcliffe from Full Press Hockey. Hi. Um, I'm just curious, like, what are you hoping to work on to make sure that you get up there and you stay up there? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, for me, coming down here, I think my main focus is just playing more efficient hockey, you know, trying to um, really limit mistakes and just try to limit, well, limit mistakes and also – enhance my offense ability, which is, could be protecting pucks down and down low and try to create more scoring opportunities and I mean to score more myself just to get just to build another skill in my game that I can take to the next level with me. And then um, I know going up and down, it can be it can be rough mentally sometimes. How are you keeping yourself just like positively motivated to just be a um just staying positive throughout all of it? Uh, in general, like I'm, I think I'm just a positive person. I try to always look at the positive things in life. But with that being said, I think um, it's really having like a big support group of my friends back home and also my family. Just always, you know, check in and to, just to normalize like my life. Sometimes I can get like, I guess like sometimes just hockey players in general, like we get really caught up in the hockey world. And we kind of forget certain things like how my little cousin is doing or how my niece is doing or you know, my brother or my mom is doing. And it's like small things like that. So it's to go back and just check in and to feel normal again and to come back. It's really, um, I mean, it really takes a lot of a uh, weight off your shoulders. And because you know, at the end of the day, I'm not just a hockey player. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Next question, Steve Kaminsky from MLive. Uh, good, good afternoon, Giovanni. I know you just got here and uh, you've had barely had time to uh, lace your skates up, but you get a chance a little bit uh, yesterday uh, 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 in Rockford uh, to play with the teammates. First impressions of this team, what do you like about this team? Uh, what are some of the strengths that you've seen so far? I think um, first impressions of the team this year, I think we're pretty good. You have a um, uh, a home game tomorrow at Van Andel Arena, first home game. And do you guys have that much of a – I don't know. Do you, can you call it a home 
I guess ice advantage these days, considering there's no spectators here. Um, you know, you're you're somewhat right with that question. We definitely have a home advantage because the way of how this year is, teams have to travel day of the game, so we get to be relaxing in in our in our beds, and we get to come to the rink. Both the other team has to drive four to five hours to get here. Okay, thank you. All right, but yeah, I, one of the last questions was asked on um, on Giovanna. There was just the, you know, normally with fans, you got the home ice. Is is there any kind of a an advantage to playing at home in a season like this? Uh, well, the the first advantage you definitely have is the last change, uh, which is no different than in a in a normal year. Uh, so that is to our advantage. But uh, I think the biggest advantage is being able to control what you can control. So you're you're, you're at home, uh, your schedule's a little bit different. We've been going day of to games on the road, and sometimes you get traffic. Things don't line up according to your itinerary. Ideally, uh, you're not eating a pregame meal at, at an inopportune time and uh, you're not traveling on a bus and having your legs or back potentially cram up on you for, you know, a five hour drive. So uh, we need to take advantage of the time at home and we're excited to be playing at home. The next question, Elaine Shercliffe from Pool Press Hockey. Um, piggybacking on that last question, you got to play in front of fans in Cleveland and it's not going to be like that every time you play on the road or even at home. So are you um, are you guys going to be playing a little bit differently or getting them in a different mindset when they're playing in front of fans as opposed to when they're not? I know sometimes players thrive off of one or the other. Yeah, well, I mean, even in the buildings that they have had fans, it's been limited number of fans. So it's not like it's a rambunctious, raucous crowd where you're dealing with a lot of uh, momentum swings and a lot of inability to, to hear and communicate on the ice because of the, the, the noises in the arena. Um, it, it, we've talked about just with our group, with, with the buildings that don't allow fans or limited number of fans that uh, we have to create and establish our own momentum and our own uh, vocal support for each other and really kind of create our own energy. So we've talked about that. I think it's because of the limited number of fans uh, or no fans, I think it's been great for our group to be more vocal and for some guys with, some leadership qualities and abilities to really step up and, and be supportive in that regard. And so, you know, when there is a big block shot or a big save or a, a turning point in a game where the guys now are being a little bit more accountable to themselves in terms of creating that energy within our group. So you think that's helping with the communication and chemistry this year a little bit? Well, I think it's helping with that aspect, but I also think it's helping just with uh, creating a little bit more uh inclusiveness with the group and a little bit more uh, positive energy with the guys. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Sure. Next question, Patrick Williams from elite prospects. Hey uh, coach. Uh, I have a question about uh, like with the game management uh, with a limited schedule this year, uh, limited opportunity to see players in game action. Do you find yourself maybe using players a little bit differently late in the game, putting them into a situation that you might not normally do uh, this early in the season? Uh, well, yes and no. I mean, nothing really has changed from our philosophy of developing players. So our job is to put players in positions to have success. And our job is to put players in positions to have that experience. So uh, to a point, yes, there, there are a limited number of games this year with 30 games. Um, but I, I don't think that really changes. You want to have these players, the whole point of us being here is to develop them. So it, it's very important for those players to go through uh, the process of being in a, you know, end of a game of D zone face off or the games on the line were down by a goal to put those players, you know, the pressures on to, to score. And, you know, sometimes those players are better served even, even by failure. The fact that they're in those situations, uh, the next time they are in those situations, they can rely on those experiences and that, uh, you know, from what they learned prior to, to that next experience, I guess. Thank you. Sure. Next up, Steve Kaminsky from MLive. 
Thanks, Randy, and, and thanks for doing these uh, uh, Zoom calls. Appreciate it, and, and good afternoon, Ben. I hey, you're want welcome. to ask, yeah, you bet. I, ben, I was wondering a little if you could talk a little bit about um, the way your team's playing. It's, it's got to be nice to be uh, coming home on back-to-back wins after an 0-2 start. Looks like you guys got some momentum going. Yeah, well, again, it's it's it is the situation we're in the, with the parameters and the protocols right now that. Uh, you know, we're traveling the day of a game, and it's tough. Uh, if you put yourself in a player's shoes to to drive anywhere between three and five hours, uh, they're not used to that. they got to get acclimated to this kind of new normal. Uh, but these bus rides, they're long days, early mornings, long days. I uh, play a game, you turn around, and you're coming home uh, sometimes late at night. You know, for example, last night we didn't get home till 2 in the morning, and you get up and you're practicing today, and uh, it's been different. So – the fact that uh, we were able to, claw, you know, for the first four games being on the road to, to be 500 uh, without any exhibition games to start the season, I think is uh, is is a great spot for a team to be in. And uh, I think that every game we've gotten progressively better as individuals and as a group, and we look to just kind of continue that wave of, uh, of growth and development. Uh, ben, can you uh, comment on having Giovanni back? Uh, he was just in here a little bit. I mean, he was asked about how to how to stay mentally tough during you know, all these ups and downs that that you know a player can face. Uh, what's it been like to have him back uh, uh, in the Griffins fold? Well, you, there's always a, no different than when you get called up to the NHL. There's that sense of excitement and that uh, you're you're going to the NHL, and when you get sent down, there's that sense of disappointment. So. Really, it's taking that time on, on the drive down from Detroit or when you return to Grand Rapids is making sure that you're checking that disappointment at the door and, and knowing full well that you're down here to develop and you're going to be given opportunity to do so in probably a bigger role than he was given in Detroit. And that's our job here is to continue to develop him. And he's come down with his head on the right way. And he had a great game last night. He was working hard. He was competing. And again, he, he probably went from playing 10 to 12 minutes in Detroit to, to playing close to 19 or 20 last night. And he was killing penalties. He's on the power play uh, on the ice at the end of a game for a, a six on five D zone faceoff shift against. And he ends up making a nice play and we score the empty netter to, to seal the game. So I think those situations are, you know, in the long run are going to, he's going to be better served for it. And sometimes it takes players a little bit of time to realize that, you know, we all kind of, it's human nature to want the easiest, shortest, quickest path to get to the highest level. And sometimes that, you know, it just doesn't work out that way. So you have to be mentally strong. You have to have uh, the the belief in yourself that you're going to get back there. And I think that he's done a good job of coming down here and having his head on his shoulders and having that mindset. All right. Thank you. You're welcome.